Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Today I'm going to show the 360 VR export to Fusion and also along the way some coordinate system setup and also the setup of some shadowing. So we're going to start out with a just solved scene where here the 360 VR camera walks along and then right into the little hut to show you what's inside. So we do have the solved scene. It doesn't have any ground plane setup, and that's what our first task is going to be. We do have a nice ground plane available to work with. And in this process, we want to reorient the shot so that at the beginning of the shot, the camera is going to be looking in the initial direction of, of motion where the camera is currently moving downwards. After we stabilize it, we want it to be moving upwards and it'll be looking up in that direction there. So we're going to do all of that sort of at the same time. Now to get the ground plane to be flat even into the little hut there, we'll just pick out one of those trackers and change its color so that we can find it again easily. Now we'll go to the constrained points view, the coordinates uh, panel there, and I'm going to use star 3 coordinate system mode. I'm going to click on one of those points at the back. That's going to be the origin. And we're going to switch to front and back mode because we're, we want basically this to be the back moving towards the front out here. And then our nice brightly colored one is going to be the third point that's somewhere on the plane. So here's our first go at this. And you can see now we have the camera moving to the top and then off to the right. So that's good. But here we want to be able to insert a earthling mesh into this scene ultimately. And we want to do that at a reasonable size. So to do that, we want to get the size of the overall scene right in the first place. And to do that, you can see that walking in through that doorway, you have to just duck a little bit. So that gives us an idea. Maybe that doorway is only about five foot five or so. If we find some trackers right at the top and bottom of that doorway, we can use them to set up the scaling of the overall scene. So let's do that now. And we'll pick one out here. I'm going to alt click this top tracker to set up this constraint. Go over to the coordinates panel, bring it to constrained points view, and here's the one tracker locked to the other. And I'm going to make that 5 foot 5, we'll call it. Now that's our one distance constraint. We actually have the one that's built by the star 3 that's, that's implicit in this y equals 20. We don't want to have two different, you know, overall sizing constraints that'll conflict with one another. So to prevent that, we just change this constraint to be on y-axis instead. So that's no longer saying that this should be y equals 20. It's still saying that it should be on the i on the y-axis with x equals zero and z equals zero. So with that set up, you can go back and run the solver and have it apply this. If you look now, you see the camera's moving to the bottom instead of up towards the top. So what's going on there? The trick is that there are actually two different setup, uh, two different potential solutions to this, and actually I think there are four. Um, here you're seeing one where 
that point, instead of being out at, at plus 20, it's, it's now at minus 33. And really, we want that to be at uh, on a plus coordinate so that the camera is moving in the right direction. So I can tell Synthize that I want that to happen by clicking this button to be Y plus so that it will pick the solution that has that desired polarity. The other choices involve upside down cameras, by the way. So now with that Y plus there, we've got the camera moving up towards the top. And you know we've got our constraints being satisfied as far as the distance. And the other constraints are all satisfied nicely. So our constraints are, are just enough. They're not too many. They're not too few. And we are ready to roll from a constrained uh, constraint standpoint. At this point, we can run the stabilize from camera path and that goes and you know adjust the camera so it's always moving straight up it's busy recomputing all these frames but yeah now we've got the camera moving straight up and while it's doing that, we can start on the next thing, which is to insert our Earthling. And we're going to do that right out here, where the camera swings by. Here's our Earthling. So we're just going to drop him into there. And we'll spin him around a bit. And now let's go back and adjust the size a bit. So we'll make it so maybe he has to stoop a little bit also. Though perhaps really maybe <laughs> maybe you should really be a five foot person. Uh, people were a bit on the shorter side then. So now we've got our inserted person sitting there or standing there as the camera goes by. If you look at this in the full view, you know, it looks a bit artificial. It's kind of a, a big giveaway that there's no shadow. So we definitely want to get a shadow to match everything else here. And to do that, we need to get a light. So let's get our light set up first. And the nice way to do that involves using a tracker and we can actually just put a tracker out here on the sun and if if we wanted and the imagery was better and it was really crucial we could we could actually track the sun for a bit but it's not really worth the trouble so we make it a zero weighted tracker so we'll find out immediately where it is and it's going to be a far tracker so it's it's sitting out there basically as a direction towards the sun. And with that direction, we can go to the lighting panel, say we want a new light, it's going to be far away. We're going to create a ray, and in this particular case where there's only you know, a far away tracker, a far tracker that's a direction, and what's a far light, only one tracker is needed to say, where that light should be. And we can just set it up there as, as the first half of that ray. I'll point out that this particular setup does not work in 1702. This was in a, you'll see this in a forthcoming version pretty soon. And to do this currently, you need to move the light around manually to the right location to match that up. But this lets us get it quickly and immediately right to the right spot. So if you look at the light, you know, you can see it's, it's centered up right there on that tracker. So that gives us our light. And now if we go over to the perspective view, now you'll see the shadow from that light is being cast onto the ground. 
And this is an automatically generated ground plane shadow by Synthize as soon as there's a light and a mesh. It's just going onto the ground plane. Uh, that's great within Synthize inside the perspective view. You know, if you look in the overall camera view, the camera view doesn't do that. And in fact, neither will Fusion. So we need to do something that we're going to be able to export to Fusion and be able to generate this shadow based on that light. And to be honest, it wasn't immediately obvious how to do that in Fusion. But there is a nice way to do it inside of Synthize. So let's go and do that. We're going to go and create a plane on the ground. This is going to be our shadow catcher. So I'm just going to toss that in there somewhere. Exact size isn't crucial. You don't make it too, too large. And now we're going to do our shadow ma map maker script. We're going, to tell it, we're going to go from the light to the selected mesh, starting somewhere around 1K on the side. And now if we go to the perspective view where you can see this sort of thing, you'll see that we've just cut that big plane down to this little size. And basically the color of the mesh is the color of the shadow that you want. But it's got this texture map applied to it that's in the shape of the shadow with the alpha equals zero for the surround. So it's, it's literally just the shape of the shadow now. And we can go and export that downstream to Fusion. We can go and adjust the opacity of it and you know, play around with it you know, in, in both applications, actually. But this gives us a nice way to export it. And let's get that started. So there are a whole bunch of different options here inside of Fusion. You can go through and look at the tooltips on them to see what those all do. Most of the defaults should generally be pretty good. I'll bring your attention to a couple down at the bottom. You can actually export to the clipboard as well as to the file. And that lets you just paste the entire generated scene into your Fusion into an existing comp, in fact. So if you need to export repeatedly, for example, you might just delete the synthesized generated portion back out and then paste in an, a replacement version, for example. You can also ask synthesized to start up Fusion automatically. Uh, the, that's not as useful as one would like just because it takes Fusion a little while to start up. So we'll go and export to Fusion. Let's go take a look at Fusion. It's just sitting here. And we'll just have it open up that file. It does take it a little bit here because it's reading in the objects for the Earthling and the uh, plane and the texture maps for them and all. But we get this overall comp set up. And here is the actual output. So let's just put that up on viewer number two. And here you see the full equirectangular 360 VR output from Fusion that's being generated from the 3D scene. So this is the actual output. If you were to write this, you'd create a saver here and connect this output node to your saver. The scene itself you can look at back up here. The scene that has all of the 3D nodes sitting there. So you can go and look around in this thing and you know, go to quad view and whatnot. So you can go and add your additional 3D elements into the 3D scene here and everything you know, will be rendered appropriately into the echo rectangular image. The background image is being composited in as a, just a 2D composite here at the very end. And you know that's being fed with the results of the re render. And it's being fed with 
a little collection of nodes that takes the original shot and stabilizes it. So these couple of nodes here take the stabilization data that's being produced by synthize. They do the stabilization inside a fusion where it can then be composited in behind the 3D elements. So you can see that here's the, the 3D elements as they've been rendered. This guy just combines them together. One other thing to note here is that there's also a, a little mini viewer path. That's the stuff that's down here. And you could actually replace this with uh, Andrew Hazelden's tools, for example, that might be a little better integrated. The idea is just to give you a, a quick, normal way to look around inside of the image as if you were a head-mounted display and let you just go and look around inside that 3D view appropriately and see the, the full rendered comp. So this is just going and looking back into that assembled equirectangular comp and giving you a way to see what, what's going on. So, you know, that continues to update as you scrub through the shot. So that's just a, a little helpful aid for you when you're setting up the scene. One other thing I just just point out, you know, there are all these different cameras here and well, a whole bunch of different renderers and, and cameras. And what's going on is you're rendering the scene six times and then combining them back together. So it does take a little while when you actually go to run the flow because it's going to go and do the, all these renders and so on. But as a result, you do get a full 360 VR equirectangular view coming out of Fusion. And the whole thing has been produced by Synthize. It runs in the vanilla free Fusion without any additional plugins or anything required. So, hope that helps out. Thanks for watching.